All right, hello everybody. This is GM Raku. It is the Illyriad, the second Illyriad Strategy Monday, newbie tips, etc., etc. Uh, it is the twelfth of May, two thousand fourteen. Um, if you hear some thunder in the background, that would be the fact that I'm in the middle of a thunderstorm. And if you hear some scratching at the door and some whining, not really whining, but usually just a lot of panting, that would be my scared doggy. He gets scared during thunderstorms, which is something he developed over time, which is really, really sad. Uh, but anyway, uh, what were we talking about today? If you joined us last time, uh, we talked about... What did we talk about last time? <laughs> I can't even remember. Uh, we talked about some different uh, topics last time. This time, I figured it'd be cool to talk about trade. Uh, trade is something that's very important in Lyriad, It's, but a lot of people don't quite know how it works. So I've pulled two people. I, I said, stop playing the game for a second. For goodness sake, you're obsessed. Come, come inside talked to me for a little while, and they kick, kicking and screaming, I had to drag him in, but we, 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 we grabbed Lycan. How you doing, Lycan? Pretty good, thanks. I just realized that's like, you know, the uh, stuff that grows on trees. It is. It's one, one other uh, word that people confuse it with. You'll have to excuse me, Lycan, because I'm on migraine meds, and they make me a little loopy, so I might ask some funny questions tonight. Uh, and also joining me is Belle. How you doing, Belle? Good, thanks. Belle, your, your accent, I can't place it. I think Australian. It's Virgin you, know, you didn't let me say something silly like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I told my wife earlier, I said, this uh, player named Belle earlier just made the word no into two syllables. <laughs> I'm pretty good at doing that. <laughs> you could you could tell me no if you want real quick. No. No, well, that's not as bad as you did before. It was really it was a, <laughs> it was a really good strong Australian no. I can't even do it. I can't. No. Fantastic. No. But uh, so what we're going to be talking about is trading, making money, whatever. There's there's a lot of different aspects to this. Uh, a couple years back, I don't you know I don't even really know how long ago. You you two might know better than I am. I mean I've played for for years, but it, it's been a while. Uh, they added um, the central trade hub stuff like that with the idea that there would be an basically if you if you go into the game and you you see that I'm playing the game right now, so you can you can check it out. Hopefully there's nothing private showing on my screen. No no emails. Nothing. Okay, so we're good. Uh, but if you ever click on the tutorial link here, you'll actually see explanations. Those are always really handy. A lot of newbies miss that. But essentially how GM Luna put it whenever she put together these tutorial videos, videos, I should say, is that the trade hubs like Centrum, places like that, you can consider them the mall. I know that's not exactly a high fantasy term, but let's just call them the mall for right now. Uh, and, and uh, you know, and it's you can go there, you can set up kind of a quote unquote stall and you can store goods there and sell them. Okay, so Lycan, I want to start with you because everybody said, oh, you have to get Lycan. Lycan is the coolest guy in the whole world. <laughs> For, so they say for trade, not for anything else. Otherwise, they don't like you. But for trade, oh, okay. Well, that's fair enough. No, I'm just kidding. But they said <laughs> he is the absolute expert. You've got to talk to him about trade. So why is that? What is it about trade, or what are they talking about when they say talk to Lycan? Well, it's basically just that I spent a lot of time, um, you know, kind of fiddling with the trade mechanics in the game. Um, obviously, my score is highest, but I don't really blame my uh, my expertise uh, on that. You know? uh, so, uh, oh, so. You're not number one, are you? Oh, I am, but uh, oh. I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really say that is really a reflection of my abilities. Uh, <laughs> well, then, it's more persistence that gives you points. Okay, I'm glad you didn't say like so. it's. It's more like bots that do are doing it. So. Oh yeah, no, yeah. Well, I don't know. I may be a little bit like a bot, you know. Super okay. Persistent and repetitive. You know? <laughs> I've seen some people say some pretty s silly stuff. Uh, we've had this new influx of new players, and some of them are used to different game mechanics. Let's just say that. And one guy was like, well, I'm going to make some bots and do this and do that. And I was like, no, you're not. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm glad you didn't say that. But very actually, uh, we've had a lot of fun with these new players. It's been a lot of fun. As somebody who plays the market a lot, like, and have you noticed that the market has, tr has it changed quite a bit? Or have you have you noticed an impact since these new players, or do you think that they're new? They're yeah. too they're too new to make a difference yet. Yeah, I wouldn't say the new players are making much of a difference. It's really the oldest players that are kind of changing things at the moment. Uh, prices obviously have gone way down, so goods values is kind of depreciated right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know the new players will get in there maybe sometime in a year or so. Well, let's start. Let me let me uh, let me type a message really quick. Um, let's start with kind of talking about that from a newbie standpoint. Bill, I don't know if you could talk a little bit about this. If somebody wanted to get into trade, look at my look at my negative gold. Look at that. That is so sad. 
<laughs> Negative. Oh, everyone's like that now, so don't worry about it. Well, I, I, you know, I haven't had as much time to really tweak this town, you know, and we're not really, we don't, we don't really play as GMs. We're not really, besides building now, so I haven't really had time to kind of tweak it. But I've got ninety-eight million. I think I'm okay for right now. Um, but uh, uh, Bell, as far as if a newbie wanted to get into trade, what do you think? First of all, let, let's do this. First of all, what does trade cover? If you could kind of define it for a newbie. What would you? How would you define it? Like, is it is it just sending goods to a player and back and forth, or or what? Often, and that's where a lot of new players do seem to get into it. But what a lot of new players are probably not told straight up is all the stuff that their codders are picking up. They don't need a trader in the hub to actually go and sell them again. They can accept already listed orders, and that's what I often suggest to new members: send your codders out there, get your hides and your herbs and your minerals. They're not some of the higher-end items, but they are ones that a lot of established players don't have room to collect themselves. Mm. And you can make a pretty good killing in the market just accepting buy orders in the hubs. And we like killing in the early area, that's for sure. So what you're trying to say, if I'm, if I'm hearing you correctly, and I think I am, um, is that a new player doesn't even, if they want to start buying from, let's say, a, a central hub like Centrum, they can just go ahead and start doing that immediately, right? Yeah, definitely. You can accept already listed orders. Exactly yeah, right. right. And your caravans will trottle all the way over to the hub, collect what you're after, drop your gold off, and bring everything home again. You don't actually need to have anything in the hub itself. Right. Just clicking right now. If you go to if you go to your the little gold pieces up here, if you go to that and you click on it, if you go to markets, the markets tab, or it's also in the in the drop down here, or whatever. Uh, but if you go to the markets tab, and then it's going to give you the location of all the trade hubs here. So let's just go to Centrum because it's the, I, I don't know if it's the largest or the, you know, it's, it's the central one. It's the zero, zero. It's where the king, the king chills out. By the way, uh, guys and girls watching the uh, live stream now, or if you're watching it now live, if you have any questions, go ahead and ask in the, in the twitch.tv uh, chat. But if you can't sign up for that or if you haven't signed up for that, you can always tweet me at Illyriad. And uh, and then that I can see your question there. But uh, go ahead now. If you have any trade questions, we'll see if we can get those answered. But in Centrum, uh, if as, as I'm just clicking around, as people watching the screen, like uh, here's livestock, for example. Here's lichen. Some guy named Lichen keeps popping up. Let's see what you have here, Lichen. By the way, it's located in Centrum. You have five thousand six hundred eighty per item. Total cost not available. Then uh, distance one thirty nine. The distance meaning one hundred thirty nine squares away from me. Correct. That's from your from the town you're currently selected on, yes. Right, and how long do you think? Now you can speed up. I, I couldn't. Yeah, I could speed up your caravan. So, but in just a non sped up fashion, how long do you think 139 squares would take to get to me? A little under four hours at max research. Wow, you are good. However, uh, you're not going to be using my vans uh, if you're doing that kind of uh, transfer from the hub. It'll be using your own caravans. Okay. Uh, so yeah, keep that in mind. But as you can see, there's epidemic. He's 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 a uh, he's what you would call a, an arms dealer. I think is that probably an accurate term. He loves to benefit from wars. Uh, so there's a lot of there are a lot of familiar names in here. But there's a lot of people who I guarantee you only play the market. Like, and as somebody who plays the market quite a bit, do you get into kind of bidding wars, trade wars with people? Not as often as you'd think. Um, a lot of the bidding wars happen in the buy order uh, section, mm -hmm. and I tend to avoid that when I can, just because I'm too lazy to actually go and do that. Okay. So. Well, let's 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 skip the higher level stuff for right now. Okay, so uh, Bell was saying that a newbie could get could get right into trade if they want to. They could. Uh, in fact, I think I'd have to check it. But we were discussing doing some different uh, some tweaks to the trade stuff so that players could get into it a lot quicker. Now I need to go back. We have a huge list of updates that we've been doing, so I need to go back and check that. Uh, but we're, the idea is that we want players to get into trade right away if they can, at least even on a small smaller level. Um, uh, but after. After that, Bell. After that, you know they're new. Maybe they've bought a few things. What What are some of the first buildings, or what should they get into first to even start to really take it seriously? To actually get into trade, especially in the hubs themselves, they're going to need a merchant's guild to actually build their trader. It's always a good start. And the first trader doesn't require wine, which is absolutely awesome to get in there and test the waters. They'll need faction markets research so they can actually drop things in the hub and have it stay there. And they'll need a trade office so that they can actually set orders. And then there's a whole bunch of research that goes along with that one. Okay. So that basically, like you said, the first trader doesn't even need wine. Wine can be pretty expensive. It certainly can be. Last time I looked, it's like two dollars, two million a barrel, something like that. Let's see here. Uh, how much? About one point six ish. I was going to say how much are you selling it for there. 
Uh, where is wine at? Do, 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 beverages. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Uh, let's see how much uh, you've got it up here. Oh, I don't, I don't see you on the seller's list. Like, and what's that about? I'm not much of a wine vendor. I hoard it. No? Okay, okay that's cool. You don't want to contribute to the delinquency of players. But let's see. <laughs> Drakmore here from Adark has won for 1600000 So that's it's not cheap. Uh, and it adds up. And it, I, I, that's because you have to go out and harvest the grapes and all that good stuff, correct? Yes. Yeah, and they're on 4,000 grapes. And that's not always easy to find in the middle of the map, and especially when someone goes and parks an army on the grape square. Well, and you don't have to give me your, any, by the way, don't feel any pressure to give me any trade kind of strategies that might give you an advantage, but if you want to give certain information, that's fine. But uh, as somebody who, let's say if you want to, like you're hoarding wine, for example, like, and um, how do you typically do it? Do you go and buy the grapes? Do you go and find them, or is it a combination of both? Well, I, I am fortunate enough to have a couple patches, so I do harvest my own grapes. Um, I have also made large, um, I buy a large amount from Alliance members and things who tend to hoard it themselves. Hmm. And then I just kind of I'm kind of holding on to them just in case the wine um, in the future, near future, gets like an extra use or so, you know, okay. just in case it's used for something else. Are you asking me a question? It sounds like you're trying. No, to no, ask me. no, oh, no question. I see. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. How about how about you, Bell? With wine or something that's kind of a higher end item like that, or a very in demand item, do you find yourself dealing with that a lot, or you just kind of ignore it? I don't sell it unless like it needs more, but <laughs> I do keep some in stock just for Alliance members that are just getting started in trade. I'll send them a few barrels so they can make their second or third trader, see how they go from there. But I've made all the traders I really intend to. I don't use half the ones I have now. That's, so mostly mm -hmm. I'm having it just for the sake of it. That's kind of funny because I'm hearing you talk about trade a lot with your Alliance members. Are you finding that trade happens inter-Alliance quite a bit? Is that where you get started? Oh, or, or is it? That's where the best prices are, really. Really? Okay. So you're, uh, another reason a good Alliance is important. Well, it's important for a lot of reasons, right. and supply is one, of course. I mean, you're going to be supporting each other that way, you know? Right. Are you finding that in an alliance, uh, like in, uh, for example, in some other MMOs, you might have an alliance that has a, a guy who plays the tank, and a, a, you know, they might call it a guild or something, you know, different roles like that. Are you trying to play the role of the trader, or are you able to kind of flex a lot, or do you, you, do you uh, enjoy playing that role? I, I find in this game... It's not so much a role situation. It's I actually do a bit of everything, really. But uh, as I do tend to stockpile goods in case my alliance does need them, just as Bell said, you know. Right. Okay. So we've built the, all the merch and get all the stuff that we need, which I haven't built yet. My my map is pathetic. I really need to kind of get busy on this thing here, and my uh, my um, my uh, library and all my. Uh, what am I trying to say? My research and stuff is just kind of pathetic right now. So don't judge me right now. I haven't really played this one much. Uh, but after that, let's say they've built up a few traders. They're starting to get a few goods. Uh, Bell, what do you think the next step prop, j just in general would be? To actually look at what you want to be selling. Um, new players can either go out and harvest items from the map, whether it's their herbs or their minerals or their animal parts. They can go and do that and they can sell the raw items. They can sell the basic armor and weapons if they'd rather just keep it all in town, so to speak. Or they can go ahead and craft items from what they're harvesting and sell those end products. Yeah, we're not totally talking about crafting, but do you do a lot of crafting, Belle? I do, just because I have the stuff sitting there. Probably not as much as what I used to. I'll just keep my cues ticking over. Um, but I don't actually use the crafted equipment. It really just sits there and I'll sell it if somebody makes a request. Are you noticing, it has the market kind of fluxed a little bit or has the demand gone up for any, for some of those pieces of the, that equipment or anything like that since a lot of the new players have come in? Or, or again, do you think they're just too young as far as level? No, you know, like I mostly sell in the eastern half of the map, so there's not that many new players there. Um, I rarely sell anything these days um, out of the hubs. Mm. Most of the trade I do at the moment comes from direct town trades for armor and weapons. Um, but for a while there, a lot of newer players that had just moved east were buying a lot of crafted equipment. Uh, but I don't see a lot of purchasing of it, really. Right. Let's talk a little bit about those differences, uh, like, because a, a lot of traders will, will kind of sneer at the thought of using a trade hub. Uh, and just go direct route. What are some of the, uh, if you can, I'm really giving, I'm just throwing these out here and hoping you catch them, but so far you've done really well. What are some of the advantages of working with a trade hub? And then I'll ask you what are some of the advantages of working with just direct? Trade? Actually, there's uh, 
there's actually three different uh, methods you can use to distribute your goods. Um, and they're all, of course, they have pros and cons, as you said. Um, with hubs, I've actually found that it's the most reliable uh, option out there for distributing your stuff because it's so easy to track, keep track of how much you have in a hub. Mm -hmm. um, it's also very caravan friendly because, I mean, when you sell an item from a hub to a person in a hub, you, there's no caravans being trade transferred there, right? Mm. Um, and it's also pretty easy because you just put the order up and forget about it. Uh, it doesn't eat your, you know, your time, your precious time. And spend a few minutes putting orders up. And it acts like a storage in a way, correct? Yeah, that's right now. That's the best thing about hubs is they're free, unlimited storage, and it's safe. Okay, they can't get stolen from. So, is that something you think we should nerf? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say no, but kidding. that's in my own interest. So, we hear, I hear a <laughs> lot of I hear a lot of people saying it's just one of the side benefits is you can store, you know, safely store. I should say a lot of stuff there. So, I'm sure people have used it to their advantage. Um, you know, t one of the th one of the things we pride ourselves on with Illyriad is that it's quote unquote realistic, you know, as realistic as you can make what is essentially a ginormous endless board game that goes on forever, uh, which I absolutely love about it. But uh, we, we like to kind of give realistic penalties to fighting and realistic, tra you know, so time and stuff like that. So, you know, th there is, uh, some people have actually s said to me, you know, they've suge sent suggestions saying there should be a very limited amount of storage in a trade hub because it represents everybody packing their stuff you know what i'm saying so it's kind yeah. of kind of an or you should have to you know use a couple of tiles around it or something for warehouses or yeah um, there you go exactly that'd be kind of that, yeah. so what are the other two you were talking about well the other way you can sell things is uh, setting up sell orders directly from your towns and uh, that's a way that's actually overlooked by a lot of players and it actually is very beneficial to do it when you're small um, selling advanced resources directly from a sell order in your town is the easiest way to get it across the map to someone else wow so um, now, how, because how would they do that? Just kind of a quick overview. You go to the, your, um, hold on a second here. You go to your market, um, just a standard little coin thing there. Market, uh, what is this here? Oh. Trade markets. Go to your trade markets there mm -hmm. in the town. And you just go place sell order. And instead of clicking on the location, it'll say this town. That's all you gotta do. Right, very cool. So you're selling, you're, it's like you're opening up your own stall in your own town there. Essentially, yes. Uh, it's it's the same method you used before hubs were introduced. And uh, the reason it's pretty good is because there's no limit on the visibility. Someone across the map can see whatever you put up in that in your town. Um, the downside there, though, is you're using your caravans, so you're sort of limited. Um, the order size is limited by your caravan capacity. Right. It'll, um, it'll actually, I mean, you have to be aware that what you're selling, you have to be able to carry to somebody. Yeah, exactly. But for that reason, using your vans, some people are willing to pay a little bit more mm -hmm. because of the convenience of it getting delivered directly to their door. Sure. I've even heard people uh, offering money to speed up the caravans and all that stuff. You know, hey, would, uh, you, would you speed it up for a little extra, that kind of a thing. That's something some people might do. I you know, Prestige is worth a little bit more to me than that. So It's worth a lot to me, too. That's why you should buy plenty of it. Ding! <laughs> All right, so, uh, and what's the third we're talking about here? The third is, go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. The, the third is the one that you were talking about, uh, dealing with players directly. Right. Um, and that's more of an advanced way, I'd say, uh, to trade, because, well, you skip out on taxes, which is great. What? Yep, there's no taxes. <laughs> there's always um, taxes. Go ahead, though. The, uh, the, you can get, I can often get, like, better prices with people, too, because people, when you're interacting directly with them, they tend to be a bit more reasonable. Um... Well, sometimes. Yeah. Um, you can also uh, use that way to like build your trade contacts. You know, you can make deals with suppliers and buyers, and you have an ongoing deal with them. Um, the only downside is you have to deal with people taking forever to read your mails and not responding, or you know. It's I mean, I, I say this as somebody who has two emails sitting, two IGMs sitting <laughs> right now. That's because they're private. I'm not opening them right now for everybody to see. But uh, I answer mine. I mean, and this is before. I'm, I've always been really, in real life, my emails, I've always answered, you know, what? Hold on a second, real quick. All right, making sure that the uh, uh, storm siren wasn't going off. Sorry about that. We're, we're in tornado <laughs> watch right now. So, uh, But, you know, I've always been good about answering my in-game mails. So that's a good point that you really want to check your in-game mails. Don't just let them sit there uh, because, you know, because you, you could be missing a very important message. Uh, a very good deal, and they might find somebody else. So what you're essentially saying, though, is you approach uh, uh, um, Bell. We'll pull you in here a little bit. So if if you want, do you do many direct trades like that? 
Not player to player usually, unless it's a new player who's not really had a chance to get established any other way. Um, like if someone pops up saying, you know, I really want to buy this, well, that's fine. So they uh, let's say somebody pops up and says, I really want to buy this. Uh, do, do you just send them an in-game mail, say, hey, I have this, and start going from there? Generally, I won't even go to mail because that takes time that I don't really want to spend. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just ask what they're after right there in GC and go from there. Some people will prefer to take it to mail because they don't want to discuss price in GC, and that's fine. Right. And I want, but, to, I want people to remember, too, that we do have a, a thing called a forum that's actually very, very handy. We actually have a trade section of the forum. I'm looking at it in my other browser uh, window on my other monitor here. You can't see what I'm looking at. But that's where all my private stuff goes, so no, you're not going to see it. And we have an actual trade uh, a trade area that you can go in and you can say, hey, I want, I want to trade this or you know that kind of thing. Do you two ever use that? You don't have to lie to me. You can tell me if you don't. Or not. I... Not for trade, because the number of orders that I fill or have are accepted, you know, each day, um, that would be a bit hectic to try to track that all through the forums, especially considering, like, you know, you put it up, and that's just going to clutter the forums with, like, a, a list of all of your orders, essentially. Right. What about so, what about you, Bill? Do you use that forum? I at don't all? use the forum at all. Uh, you know, it, I've, I've been debating and looking at it, it maybe moving it to a little bit more uh, of a prominent place because it's kind of hard to find. It's not hard to find, but it's not as so obvious. Do you know what I mean? That's not why I don't use it. It's for <laughs> a lot of the content. <laughs> well, no, but you know, uh, you know what I'm saying. I'm talking about the just kind of moving the trade a little bit, emphasizing the trade form a little bit. I think people should should use it. And yes, I know that a lot of people have suggested maybe you could have a separate trade channel, et cetera, et cetera. All that stuff that is a great suggestion, but of course all that requires uh, other stuff, so uh, you know, I won't say if or if not, or when or when not that's coming. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of different ways to do it. Okay, so we've covered some of the different ways that you can go into a trade. Uh, overall, uh, like in somebody who does it the most, I don't know if you already said this. What what's the be what, what what is your preferred method? I'd say hubs. Yes, it's um, and when you're first starting out, you're a new player. You're only going to be selling advanced resources or whatever you make yourself. Right. I'd say direct town orders is a good way to go. Um, but that you kind of outgrow that because 210,000 basics an hour or every order, you know, every few days of van travel, um, that becomes hard to do. Mm -hmm. So you eventually want to move to trade hubs is what I would go to. Direct, you're never not going to uh, do direct like or deals with other players, um, but focusing only on that is going to be very unreliable, I find. Okay. It can take a lot of effort for what it's worth. And so when you're saying you're doing a number of orders, do you tend to kind of, uh, you know, do it in kind of a regimented way? You wake up, you put your orders in, you come back at the end of the day and check them, that kind of a thing? Some people spend hours each day just staring at these things, hundreds of orders. Um, I'm, I'm really lazy, so uh, I tend to, you know, update it once a day, maybe. Uh, maybe once every couple, if I can remember to. Right. Um, and I mean, I don't have as many orders as a lot of traders like Llewellyn or like I think Acad Epidemic probably has a whole bunch up there. Yeah, he likes to he likes to come in there and say, "By the way, I'm selling swords." He's a very smart trader. How about you, Bell? Uh, what's your preferred method of trade? I fill up all my sell orders until it tells me I can't have any more because my research isn't high enough, and then I just leave it until I go, "Oh, I don't have very many left. Let's start the whole process again." I mm -hmm. don't change prices. I don't pull them down. They just sit there until they sell. So you don't really try to really work the market as much as it sounds like. No, that. not at all. If I'm going to, like, if I do anything to maintain my trade ranking, which is not fantastic, I will do a direct town trade and set something up that way. But as far as the hubs go, I just sit and forget. Do you think that a lot, now we, we have a really active, really active hubs, but do you think that uh, in other words, what do you think is, is, is the most important thing to have a robust market, especially in a game where people can attack each other freely and stuff like that? What do you think is, is, it, is, it, is it the ability to, to directly trade like that? Is it, the, is, the, is it the ability to speed up the caravans if you need to a little bit? Is it, you know, what do you think some of those keys are there? Like, and I'll ask you that. Um, uh, I'd say just being able to transport a lot of goods quickly. Uh, I mean, speeding up things is great, but not everyone's going to want to burn prestige on that. Yeah, they do. Uh, they should. <laughs> they should. I know. Well, you burn yeah. a lot. Do you burn a lot of prestige? They say. Uh, yeah. I okay. used to. I used to. Mm. I've been a bit stingy these I'm days. I'm not going to have to attack your town, am I? Well, you can try. 
I'm just, uh, I don't attack people who don't know. You're fine. It's just, you're totally fine. Uh, I, was, I was hopeful. We're very, we're very, <laughs> uh, we're very proud of the fact that our game allows people to play literally for free if they want to. Yeah. But sometimes it kind of hurts when they are in chat and say, ha ha ha, I play literally for free. And they're on there like 18 hours a day. It's a little bit hurtful, but it's like, <laughs> well, I've you... spent plenty, so. No, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> like, we, we love that fact. We love the fact that it's, it's, it doesn't have, you just don't have that pressure. A lot of yeah. games have that pressure of, oh man, I need to put five bucks in or I'm screwed kind of thing. So, uh, Bill, what do you think? What's really important to maintaining a market, especially in a free-for-all PvP game like this? I think, for me, the best thing about them is being able to store everything there, sell it as I need it, but proximity as well. I don't trade outside the East because I don't want to spend two days shipping everything over hmm. for a bunch of gold. So... I think if you're going to get into trade and you want to use it to support something like an army or whatever, mm-hmm. pick a hub that's close to you. It may not have as much trade as Centrum. It may not get the prices of Centrum, but the convenience factor is a lot higher. I see. So, But you know you can speed up those caravans with, uh, with Prestige, don't you? Yeah, but I'm not going to spend prestige just to ship a caravan over for it to sit in a hub. I'm just saying if you want to. Okay, let's do this as a, as a, because these are newbie tips. I want to show people exactly uh, exactly what we're talking about. Belle, do you mind if I show your one of your towns on the stream? Yeah, here? go for it. Okay, so I'm going to search for your name. Okay, I'm going to put Sa Bell, which we were talking about that earlier, weren't we? And we didn't. And we didn't. I love your moose. Uh, towns, let's go. I'm going to, okay, your sprawling city of Vastuco Terraces. Do I need to ask mm-hmm. what that is? No, oh, just town name. Okay, I think Pongo wants against the rules. I'm going to send some mammoths to destroy it, by the way. Okay, <sighs> so I'm going to send you one gold, okay? okay. I, I don't think the players will think I'm unbalancing the game by sending you one gold. So it, if I wanted to do that, it's, you, you can search here for the player. You can search for the player you want. Let's say somebody says, yeah, my name's... Or, you know, if you're talking to them in chat, of course, you can just click on their name. Let's say if you want to send somebody. So there's the person there. You say, oh, cool, and you click on their talent. You pick the talent you want to send the good to, and you click... And it's just as simple. You can send resources. I'm going to send a single gold, uh, which, by the way, uh, you can uh, send back to me because that's unbalancing the game. Okay, so it's going to it's going to tell me down here required caravans. One of five. I only have five caravans. My this town is a newbie town uh, for the position, so it's it only has five at max. What do you get? What's the max? I forget. Oh my gosh. I am totally blanking on the max, uh, but you can uh, it'll it'll tell you how many you need of the five, how many of the caravan. All that information is down there. So once I do it, I'm going to hit send a caravan. I don't know if you're in game right now, Bell, where you can see that. Okay, so what we're looking at is it's going to say it's saying there 21 hours and three minutes to go all the way, and you can see it leaving my town literally in real time. You'll actually track this. This is one of the things we're really really proud of. You'll actually see movements tracking in real time. Um, this is that's kind of a funny question I always wondered. If you're a really busy trader, Lycan, can you look at a, a caravan and kind of notice its and kind of estimate how long it's going to be? Like, do you, are you think you're that good? Like you're the caravan whisperer, like you could see that caravan and saying it's moving an inch per hour. That's going to take three days. That kind of thing, or do you? Do you oh. No, that's okay. not a thing. Yeah. There are timers for that reason. No, I know. I'm just curious if you were that good. Okay, so see how you, you see how it's actually moving in real time, which again we're very very proud of. I love that you can watch everything moving, and I love it when you can see armies approaching your town and they're all look very deadly. So I'm gonna go to my movements here, and she's gonna say, you know what? I only have like 15 hours left to live. Can you hurry up with that? So I'm gonna speed up. Uh, where is it? I'm gonna, uh, for this town's moving. So for for three prestige, I'll actually cut that in half I believe yes and now it's down to 10 hours 30 minutes I'm gonna do that again five hours two hours but as you see I'm spending three prestige each time so you can do that if you need to so don't be afraid to spend tons and tons of prestige to do this but I wanted to show people because a lot of people do ask about prestige because the game does, doesn't demand that you 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 buy it at all so I've actually sped it up I can speed it all the way up here to where it's going to be there in two minutes so by the end of this uh, conversation she'll actually have my uh, have my caravan at her town with my one gold. So there you go, Sabelle. So, so you've got a free gold coming from me. I'm so rich. I, you know, it's. It, but I didn't tell you, but it's an exploding gold. So all your towns are destroyed. Oh, no. Well, that one town is destroyed. Okay, so that's that's kind of some of the movement stuff like that. We were talking about earlier the three different ways you can do it. For a newbie, what do you think that... I, I think you might have already kind of covered this, but just to reiterate it, what is the best way for a newbie to start off? The direct trading? Yeah, the direct town like sellers, like setting up 
one in your town. You don't need a trader for it. You don't need any buildings. Yeah. I don't think you even need research other than just having caravans available. Well, and also, so, you know, a lot of new players, they really get into Alliance really fast. They, you know, they'll join one really quickly, especially players coming from a game where they played a lot like LOU or any of the other MMRTSs out there. You know, a lot of players feel naked without a, uh, without a, uh, a, an alliance surrounding them and protecting them. So they could ask in their own, the very, really, the first thing you should do is probably ask in your alliance, wouldn't you agree, and say, hey, does anybody need this or need that? Typically, typically yes, and like, you know, asking for resources outside an alliance is sort of frowned upon. Um, that's why a lot of players will discourage people joining alliances too quickly. Now say that again, I, 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 just to make sure we're, we're emphasizing that. What do you think is frowned upon? Um, kind of asking people for resources when you've joined an alliance who's supposed to be supporting you. Oh, you mean like asking the alliance for it? Asking for the asking your alliance is great. People should do that. Oh. Um, that's why your alliance is there. Uh, it's asking for people. They're asking for resources from people outside your alliance. I see. I thought that's what I was going to say. Is usually people, from what I notice, better. Now, as far as the official stance on it, we don't have an official stance on it. You can ask whoever you want for uh, you know resources, and you can also attack whoever you want. I don't really care. Um, as long as it's allowed by the game mechanics and et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, it's generally frowned on from the uh, community etiquette standpoint, the player base, right, yes. which has been really fun to watch develop. That asking in chat is fine. Uh, just just make sure that a you're not begging. Which you, how much is begging? You'll know when people start saying stop begging, and then just stop. Uh, but you know, once you have an alliance, you can actually see that conversation happening in global chat right now. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, is there is that happening right now? Yeah. Uh, I didn't even see that. Just tell me if I need to like tell anybody to be hush because they're taking... no. But the same thing. It's generally the expectation is that once you join an alliance that they're going to support you and give you all that advice. And yes, Global Chat is still there, especially when they're not around, but usually you join an alliance because they can support you. Yeah, our Global Chat is very is very interesting because, we talked about this last time, because of the lack of a, of a direct whisper or a, uh, a direct player-to-player -player chat ability. I mean, you have in-game messages, you have alliance chat, and then you have the Global Chat. The, the interesting thing about it, how it's developed, is that it's developed this really, really unique thing amongst, especially MMRTSs, wow, there's a whole bunch of stuff out here, uh, especially amongst uh, MMRTSs where people are kind of forced to be polite uh, to each other because they have an alliance backing them up. And you, know, you don't just go off and start fighting people. So with trade, I've, I've seen that most people don't really pop into global chat with trade requests. What do you think that is like? And because they're busy just throwing it up on the markets or dealing with their alliance or are they afraid it's against the rules or what? I actually, I have no idea why it doesn't happen more often. I would have expected it. Um, if there is a, a separate channel for simply just trade, you know, global chat and trade chat, I imagine that would happen a lot more often. Um, they might just be intimidated by, you know, the number of people that are in there sure. or maybe just because it's moving so fast, um, it's more not worth doing, you know. <laughs> no uh, one's going to see it necessarily. The chat room says Cruncher Sport and is that Darty? Who is that? I think that's saying. I think Cruncher Sport is saying that's Darty again. Anyway, I often find that it's easy to share res at reduced prices with the hub. So, what what is he talking about there? Like, what he's talking about is having um, basically you stockpile goods in a hub, and then if someone else needs it, um, you can um, you know like make a really cheap buy order one person, and then you just transfer goods to them immediately. Mm -hmm. and they can use their caravans to transfer it to their towns. At least I think that's what he's talking about. Well, yeah, I, I believe so. I believe so, yeah. Uh, have millions of res and not near enough vans to feed everyone. Yeah, so, I mean, are you finding that that the, the economy, the trade, all that balances out during times of war, between, you know, massive war and stuff like that, or tournaments? Or are you finding that uh, uh, that the, the trade is, t is kind of typically, um, does it lean one way or the other? Like, are you always gold heavy or is it, does it just depend? It's based on time. I mean, the longer we wait, the more gold that's going to be generated in the game. And uh, as it stands, the only way the system is removing gold from it is taxes. And that might not be enough. Um, taxes is the small amount, the negligible amount you use to make troops and resources. Right. Um, I mean, right now people are sitting on tens of billions of gold and, of course, tons of resources. So prices are going to drop mm -hmm. because demand is not going to change really right um, unless we have a huge influx of players which hopefully we do we've been having a lot they uh, we've we've consistently gone up for a long long time 
Uh, but yeah, this LOU closing definitely helped. But there's a lot of people who, of course, are just we, we, we normally just have a lot anyway. We've been getting a lot of press lately. We've gotten some coverage on some more major sites, et cetera, et cetera. So that's been helping. Uh, uh, Bail, though, how do you when you're trading? I know you're, you're a little bit more of a casual trader, but do you find yourself excuse me, do you find yourself kind of with a, a, too much of one thing or does it all kind of balance out the end? Uh, generally balances out the end because I only sell what I've got to spare. It's not something, like especially when it comes to armor and weapons and whatnot, even before you start getting into the harvestables and the crafted items. If I don't think I've got it there to spare, I'm not going to sell it. So generally I'll do a sale when I know I've got a few thousand of something to go up. So you're not really you're not really specializing. It sounds like. No, I just sell whatever I've got too much of and can't be bothered shipping elsewhere. Right, and like, and you're 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 kind of an you're just kind of covering whatever you can, right? Or are you specializing as well? I I pick out things that people will will buy quickly. Um, the markets kind of fluctuate from day to day, and I find small orders that will quickly sell are a lot easier to manage. Right. So right now. Really good goods to look at are things like cows. Uh, basic hides are great. Um, there's certain crafted items uh, like pikes and uh, oh, so like the terrain gear, mm -hmm. terrain bonus gear, mm -hmm. those kinds of things that will have. They've been very high demand, uh, especially because of the war in the tournament. Right. Um, and those things will sell quickly. Uh, that's why you don't see me selling a lot of things like beer and books and spears. Right. Uh, because right now the prices are not really worth it. Right. So give a tip then if you're if you're let's say you're you're trying to see what the market is doing you're trying to uh, you know uh, put some stuff on there make a little money what are some of the what can you give me kind of one kind of insider good juicy tip that a newbie could kind of use to start off with you you don't have to give your best stuff away I know you want to reserve that so you can <laughs> destroy everybody but uh, well. I mean, you gotta spend a couple days trying to sell things in order to see if they do sell. Mm -hmm. um, a good thing to look at, though, is the difference between the highest buy order and the lowest sell order. Um, if you go right now to the markets, you can see that cows, there's a very small difference, 17 gold, right? Mm -hmm. um, that means that people aren't selling cows, um, I mean, they're not selling cows any quicker than to buy orders that they are, are as they are accepting sell orders. Okay. Um, right now, it's really easy to sell cows with a sell order. Right. Um, but if you look at things like, let's see here, um, yeah, that's pretty good right now. I'm getting the inside scoop. <laughs> I feel like I'm watching Wolf of Wall Street right now, except no nudity. Uh, I mean, uh, okay, we can go back to looking at wine here. I mean, okay, uh, okay. there's, there's a 100,000 gold per unit difference there sitting in the market. So that tells me that there's a lot of people filling buy orders for wine, which means there's a lot of sellers basically getting rid of their wine for less. Okay. Um, it's going to be a bit harder to sell wine with a sell order in there because of that. Okay. I'm going to have to go back in there and back and listen to this in like four times to absorb all that. <laughs> Bell, whenever you go onto the market, are you just kind of because you sounded like you know you sounded like I was always. I just enjoyed throwing stuff up there and seeing what sold. And I found that as long as my prices were relatively reasonable, they would eventually sell. Um, but are you ever in a hurry to sell f more, or do you? Are you just kind of keep that attitude kind of going? You're just kind of laissez-faire about it. Yeah, I'm just a bit relaxed about it. Generally, I will look at how much I've got to sell um, and compare that with orders that are already up there. So. Uh, if there are a lot of orders around the same volume as what I've got, I'll match that price or go under it a little bit. If there aren't that many orders for the volume I'm selling, I might bump my prices up a little bit. I see. Okay. Go so, from there. So it's not as it, it, it's kind of interesting. I didn't know that I'd be getting two people kind of from opposite ends of the spectrum a little bit. Somebody who's a trader but a little more casual about it, like I always was when I played, and then somebody who is uh, he's you know he's up till like four a.m. Uh, you know with Kool Aid drinking really sugared out Kool-Aid to stay up all night or whatever the kids drink nowadays. I don't know. Typically <laughs> just tea. Tea. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's not very exciting. Tea and cocoa. Tea and cocoa. Okay, there you go. Uh, you know, and you're, and you're watching the market. Do you find yourself doing that like? And do you ever sit there and do what those other players These days? Yeah. Less than before, but I did at one point do a lot of that. And there's there's players out there that still do, I'm sure. Oh, there are players in an, in a game where, as you, as many of the, the uh, viewers now or later will know, that developers and myself are very large fans of open sandboxes, meaning players make the market, the players make 
you know, all you know, basically the players create the game in a way. You know, we we give them the tools and they kind of create the drama and all that good stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Eve Online is 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 a typical kind of source of inspiration for a lot of. Uh, a lot of what we do, and if you look at a, like a game of Eve Online, the mar- there are people who only play the market. They literally will park somewhere and they'll only play the market, and they never, they don't do combat, they don't do anything as long as they can avoid it. Uh, so, are you are you, are you familiar with players like that? Um, to a point, but uh, I don't really know any personally. Yeah, <laughs> I tend to. I mean, in games, I've played other games, other MMOs and things. Yeah, um, I tend to accumulate gold in all these games, but. Really, that's because I just spend less than I am gaining. Okay, so, so I mean, it's we're only going to take. I try to keep these around forty-five minutes. I don't like to go for an hour. If anybody, by the way, has any questions in the chat room, holler now. If you have questions later, you can always send me an in-game message uh, in the game GM Raku. You can also contact. You can send us a tweet on Twitter at Illyriad. Uh, if you're going to send us a tweet, you might as well jump in the game, though it's a browser-based game, and holler at me. Uh, but w- before we go, what I like, to, what I think I, I might regret this later, uh, as I'm starting to decide to do this more. When I have players in here, I want to ask what some of your complaints are about the current topic. So, like, and we'll start with you. If you had to think of something uh, that you don't like about the system, uh, bugs don't necessarily count because we're if, yeah. there, if there are any, we'll get to that. There is one feature that I would love. Um, if you go to your, your hub overview um, right now, there is a section there that's called orders. I'm not sure if you're, I mean, if you're I'm following it. Here. Are you talking about in the, oh, in orders, yeah. Yeah, that screen will allow you to transfer goods from your hub uh, to any of your towns and any other hub using vans in the, that you're storing there. Okay. Um, uh, mine is limited right now because I only have the one town. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have any trader there. You need a trader there, anyways. Yeah. Um, the issue there is you can't send goods from your hub to anyone else's town. And that is quite limiting because what you have to do, end up doing, is transferring goods from your hub back to your town and mm-hmm. then to another person's town. So if there's one thing I could have, it would be a coordinate system within the hub orders screen so that you can actually send to anywhere. Okay, so you're saying, as it is right now, you have a bunch of stuff stored in Centrum, let's say, right? And, yep. and your buddy says, hey, transfer some of those to me. Yes, and you, exactly. And what you have to do is send them back to yourself first and then send them on to your buddy. Yeah, as long as they don't have a trader in the hub, that's what you'll end up having to do. And okay. it actually is very limiting, especially since I only have so many caravans to go around at the point. I see, right. I, I, what You're at max caravans, I take it, probably, right? Yeah, it's 70 per town, 210,000 per town capacity. Right. So. And you're at max. Uh, yeah, by the way, chat, yes, you can ask questions of the GM. Uh, if uh, if it's a question about trade, I'll answer it. If, if it's a question about something else, I might not answer it. I might request it if you have a concern or something like that. Send me an in-game mail and we can discuss it. I say that a lot. People think I'm ignoring them. I'm not. It's just a lot easier to like, you know, than to discuss it in like, chat or something. But, yeah, ask away. Uh, Bell, how about you? Uh, and now, like, and if you have more complaints, go go for it. But, Bell, what about you? What, what would you think you'd like to see added or changed or so. That's also my least favorite screen, but for a completely different reason. Why is that? I, with the destination sending to your towns, I am notorious for forgetting to change it from Astrogu, which is my first listed town, to the one I actually want. So instead of a quick five minute trip back to my town, it's an hour and a half away. So I'd like to be able to either have that first option blank or be able to type in what town I'm actually after. Okay, I so see. So it doesn't default to someone. I see. So you can mess up, in other words. All the time. Yeah, okay. So that sounds like a player problem. I'm going to attack your towns. Yeah. Where's, your, where's your town again? Let me send some <laughs> send mammoth. Use an error every time. I'm going to pretend I know GM commands. GM commands send mammoth. We don't, I don't do that. Oh. Uh, I could probably could. I could probably destroy towns. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll try it sometime. All right, so that's it. That was, that was, I'm just kind of tame. I'm surprised. I'm, I'm, yeah. It makes me very yeah, happy. Yeah, and the graph I have, really. Oh, okay. Use an error. No, no, I was kidding. No, seriously, no. That, that. <laughs> no, it usually is. Well, I mean, but one of the advantages are, of talking directly to players is you do want to hear of any little, a little tiny thing in a certain screen. Because the, let's be honest, the Trade Hub screen can be a little intimidating, especially for uh, new players or for players who, like myself, I was never really big on trade in any game just because it can be kind of intimidating, especially when you hear a player like Lycan who's like, 
check the difference between this and that, and, and you know, it, it can make, make your head swim a little bit. So the difference, uh, a button placement or anything like that here or there can can easily make a lot of difference. So yeah, and by the way, if anybody has any any anything to add to that, like they like they would add to the they would like to add to the trade markets or the hubs or blah blah blah. You can in-game mail it. The best thing to do is do it on the forum, and I say that because the forum is permanent. It's going to sit there forever. My in-game mail is going to get piled up and piled up, and I might forward it on to the other developers. I pretty much always do, or we might discuss it, but it kind of goes in the pile of mails. But in the forums, we can sit there and we can we can actually you know read it. We can discuss it. It's there permanently, so I would always suggest doing that. Uh, any anything else that you want to point out? Any more tips, liking for new players? What would you say? Uh, well, the I would say just produce your own goods. That's the biggest thing I can really give them. Uh, don't do what a lot of players are doing right off the bat. They go into the markets, post a buy order of low, get buy up those goods, and then sell them for less, or for more, rather. Right. Um, this is a way to make profits, yes. Uh, it's minimal, uh, and you're going to be burned if the market continues to fall as it is. So what you want to do is just pick something that someone's going to buy, Produce it with your own towns, or harvest goods like go out and hunt, get some hides, hmm. and sell them for the lowest price or for the highest price you can manage. I guess so be- because you're you mean because it's kind of essentially free to start. I mean, you can go out and grab it and come back and make yeah. It well, too. the idea is you're going to be making a hundred percent profit right. regardless of what you right. do or how little you make on them, right? So, so you can afford to con- to undercut by a bit more by doing that. So at first, though, a, new, a brand new player though they're going to be concentrating on their basic or use of the advanced resources, right? Yeah, it's the advanced resources you're really going to be making money on at the start. Um, well, that and I guess common resources, common hides are great too. Um, players will buy those still. Anything you cut it can pick up usually sells well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then we'll get. I think we covered. Did we talk about cutters last time? I think we'll probably talk about crafting and getting more into that, like the map interaction stuff as well, because we're not. We're definitely just barely touching touching the, the, the tip of the iceberg with this. We could talk for four hours about all the different trade stuff you can do. But it sounds like essentially what you're saying, though, is that it, uh, you know be patient. Don't just try to jump in head first and expect to make a billion gold or whatever. You need to just kind of chill out and, and, and fill the market out. You started a long time ago, though, like, and, and you did it as well. Actually, you started a longer time ago, didn't you, Bill? Um, August 2011 ish. Wow, there you go. So, uh, so how has the market changed since then? Have you seen it just grow or just become insane, or is it pretty much the same, just larger? I didn't really look at it before there was the big update to the hubs. I didn't do a lot of selling there. Um, again, the same kind of deal with town trades. Just whenever I had a bit of excess, would just sell it off. I think that there has been a lot more trade since the hubs have come in. Because you do have a localized market, you don't have to, you know, face sending your caravans from Laoshin all the way over to the wastes Plus just to want. get a hundred thousand wood kind of deal. Mm. But um, apart from that, I haven't noticed a huge amount of difference. Okay. Just prices dropping really. I mean, when I started, you'd be looking at three or four gold per item for just basic resources. Right. And now, sometimes in Centrum, you're paying what point zero one point one. Right. So you're yeah. So the prices are. It, that's another interesting thing as a developer. You watch as the the market does things that you never expected. <laughs> it can sometimes be disheartening, but it can teach you a lot about uh, how real life markets. It's very it's very interesting stuff. It's a little bit uh, above my head a lot of the times because I just don't. Uh, I'm I'm more like Bell. I have a little bit more of a laid back attitude about it. Uh, but what's interesting about it is if you want to get into it, it becomes kind of a combat of its own. Lycan, have you found that there's a lot of kind of trade wars going on? I hear that a lot. Uh, I wouldn't say a war, but you always kind of fight um, people in the markets for lowest or highest price. Okay. Um, you know, that's undercutting the bidding wars that you're talking about. So do you have an arch, like an arch nemesis, an arch enemy? That's <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't say so. Um, I don't really pay that much attention to who I'm either undercutting or who's undercutting me. Okay. I, um, I notice the same couple of names all the time, but those are the people like Will and who spend, you know, a day, like an hour out of her day kind of updating orders constantly. Okay, here, let me, here, hold on, let me type in this command. Send mammoths to Lil I'm just kidding, I'm not going to do that. Ah, excellent. No, no, no. <laughs> I, we, want the, we want the big traders. I love that stuff. We, you hear that a lot, and there's there's a lot of different ways to play, and that's one of our favorite ways to play is that you're in, you're in there... 
uh, you know, buying and selling and providing. I, I, I just get such a thrill when the, during like a during like a war or a tournament or something. The players were like, "Hey, I'm having a big sale." And they like do this advertisement for their goods. <laughs> Actually, that's one thing that uh, I might mention is uh, trade sanctions, embargoes, and things. That's something that would be awesome to have in the game. That would be really cool. Well, elaborate on that just for a minute. Well, Describe what like you'd like you have, to see. You have non-aggression pacts and you have confederation right. agreements. Mm -hmm. um, you could add like an embargo so that. If you an embargo, if your alliance is embargoed with another, you could restrict caravan movement between those alliances. You could hide uh -huh. your, your alliance's orders from them and their orders from you. To uh -huh. prevent trade between or just not allow them to accept it. Let them see it and know that they cannot <laughs> add it. In front of them, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty hardcore. That is actually really, that's a really cool idea. And I take it that you've written up this uh, idea on the forums and the suggestion forums? Oh, not at all. Oh, Please. no. <laughs> it's a great idea. I'll just keep it to myself. Yeah, that's, that's a cool idea. I like that that kind of a thing uh, because it, it actually – trade is great because you, you – you give a way for players to interact or for to even participate in, let's say, a war attorney, something like that, without actually doing armies and – you know, so you give, you make them, you allow them to feel useful, you know what I'm saying, without necessarily, or you allow players to do a lot of damage uh, behind the scenes by providing trade. weapons or not providing weapons. I mean, you can do a lot of damage by, like, just restricting trade to an alliance, so. So a trade embargo, huh? Trade embargo. Well, that sounds like uh, a cool idea. Okay. Well, we'll look into it. But hey, anyway, we're going to shut it off about, actually, we're a little bit over, but um, we're going to be, we do these once a month. If, if people seem to like them, which people have quite a bit, we'll look into maybe doing them more frequently. I don't know, maybe every two weeks, every three weeks, something like that. Uh, we try, I've been trying to do what I call like a one thing, like something, some kind of little happening every week. Uh, in Illyriad, uh, we've been as you as you guys and girls and players have been noticing, we've been putting out a lot of little patches and a lot of little bug fixes. And then, of course, we had the uh, the tournament recently. Uh, so we're you know we're we're always open to different suggestions like the trade embargo stuff like that. Feel free to in game mail me if you want. Feel free to follow us on Twitter at Illyriad. We're also on Facebook, of course, Illyriad. You can just search there, and it's on it's on the main site as well. Uh, please add us on there. We add a lot of information on there, uh, and feel free to. Uh, to help these new LOU players as well as the other players because trust me they're not all coming from LOU but there's a lot of new players coming in right now it must be the it must be the season or something make them feel nice and comfortable because like I tell everybody those are those are potential new targets in the future and so so keep that in mind you're going to want to have some uh, some new uh, some new people to send your armies to uh like and thanks for joining me though Hey, no problem thanks for having me and Bell thank you all the way from uh all Aust uh, Georgia America <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, <laughs> you know, actually, the Australian accent has a lot to do with the Southern accent here in America. It's a very similar kind of thing. I don't know if you know that or not. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, it's a very it's it's a strange thing. You see a lot of words like Southerners. You know, I'm technically a Southerner, so you might hear it a little bit in my voice. Uh, but thanks for joining me, though. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Yeah, and thanks, players, for watching. Uh, this will be up on YouTube later. It'll be on uh, Twitch.tv slash Luna dash uh, underscore. I'm sorry, Illyriad. Uh, it's, it's all linked there if you want to follow or watch it. If you go to the right now to the video section of the twitch.tv slash Luna underscore literary ad, if you, you see that videos button, you click on that, you're going to see, uh, you're going to see the old videos. They're, they're automatically recorded and they're automatically stored there. So you can always watch the old videos. So pretty soon we'll have a library of these kind of player, uh, player, uh, discussions. You know, I'm thinking the next time instead of instead of uh, crafting you you what do you guys think i think i want to start getting into combat sending armies and doing that good stuff i think that'd be good that could be now's, a lot of fun yeah now's a good time are you guys warriors as well oh, well i maintain that i have 25 true shots and that's it okay so there's a target everybody right there well <laughs> how, how about you lichen oh i don't know uh i might have troops <laughs> you might oh see that's good see lichen knows what he's talking about he's not giving information exactly I'm glad you didn't do that, but still, he's he's go ahead and attack him. See what happens. Probably you'll probably die. You have a big alliance, like him. Uh, well, big enough. Yeah. How about they're you? They're the best alliance. So. How about you, Bill? Yeah, I yeah, they're pretty feisty. They're doing pretty well in the tournament so far. I'm oh, are they really? With them. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, so they're holding the square out there. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, and actually, we just put up in the forums. We just put up day fifteen. Is it? Oh my gosh, what day is it? Uh, for the tournament, we just put that. We'll put those every day, so keep an eye on that. Uh, at the end of the month, it's going to be a lot of fun to award those prizes. I'll probably actually do a Strategy Monday special 
uh, with the winners or some of the winners, I should say not all of them, but some of the winners uh, who want to come forth and just chat about the the tournament. But if you have any suggestions about trade, feel free to ask. Uh, also, make sure whenever you're in the trade window, always look for these little T these T things. That's going to be our tutorial videos. Always look at it. They're a little bit old at this point, but they're fantastic. They cover most of the basics. But if you have questions, send me an in-game mail. Like, and could people ask you questions in-game as well about trade? Absolutely, always. Okay, and is is L-Y-K-E-N. How about you, Bill? Of course. So, and hers, hers is Saw Bell, S A Bell. Apostrophe, what is that? Apostrophe Bell, whatever. But yeah, you, yeah, you ask in chat, you'll find her. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. Uh, my uh, panel, if you want to stick around after the show, don't hang up. I'll, I'll take care of that. And I'll see everybody in a month. Other than that, I think the next little event we have going on is I can't remember what it was. Uh, some kind of contest. I'll let everybody know we're going to be doing some trivia as well, so stick around in the chat. Make sure you keep an eye out for that. All right, thanks everybody for joining me. Seeing you in a month. Bye bye.